15 Reasons Meghan Markle Will Be a Better Princess Than Diana We all loved Princess Diana because of her compassion. She had a big heart and it showed. Remember how beautiful she was, with her huge blue eyes, English rose complexion and wonderful smile. Diana was so young and innocent when she married Prince Charles at Street. Paul's Cathedral in July of 1981. Despite all of her good points, Diana had her problems. She was dealing with her husband's close friendship that's one way to put it, anyway with Camilla Parker Bowles. Charles gave Camilla a fancy bracelet right before Charles and Diana's wedding. Diana wasn't supposed to see the gold and lapis bracelet, which came from fancy British jeweler, Asbury E. This expensive piece of fine jewelry was engraved with the initials, F and G. Fred and Gladys F and G were Charles and Camilla's nicknames for each other. Apparently, Diana flew into a rage when she found the bracelet. She kicked some furniture. Diana was also coping with an eating disorder bulimia. She told biographer Andrew Morton that Charles had called her chubby early on in the relationship and this thoughtless and insensitive comment triggered a new and unhealthy lifestyle of binge eating, followed by purging. Diana also suffered from bouts of postpartum depression. Diana, the people's princess struggled in so many ways. It's possible that Meghan Markle won't share the same struggles. She may find that being a good princess is so much easier. Actually, I should clarify that Meghan isn't actually going to be a princess. Meghan Markle is probably going to be known as the Duchess of Sussex. Kate Middleton is often referred to as Princess Kate but her official title is the Duchess of Cambridge. While Meghan won't be a princess, it's safe to say that she's going to operate under the glare of the media spotlight for the rest of her life, just like Diana did. Do you think that Meghan will handle the pressure better than Diana did? Meghan isn't so bitter. According to a New York Post article, Diana was consumed with anger and self-pity a lot of the time. I think Diana had good reason to be bitter, mostly because of Camilla. Diana named her love rival, the Rottweiler. Meghan doesn't have the same issues, so she's probably going to be less temperamental following her wedding to Prince Harry. In 1992, Diana told a friend and rumored love interest that Charles made her life real, real torture. Diana. Princess of Wales was trying to find the pathway to a happier future. She felt that she'd done a lot for the royal's bloody hell. After all I've done for this F. King family, she complained to the same source, James Gilby and gotten little respect and affection in return. The whole situation with Charles and Camilla was just nasty. Meghan isn't going to find herself in the same love triangle situation, unless history repeats itself, which it sometimes does. There's no other woman. I'd like to spend a little more time on the other woman issue. It was a pivotal issue in Diana's life. In fact, it could reasonably be argued that Diana would still be alive if Charles hadn't been involved with Camilla. As you surely already know, Diana died in a car accident in France, while being pursued aggressively by the paparazzi. She was with Dodi Alfade, who was her boyfriend at the time of her death. Diana perished on August 31, 1997. Dodi was also killed in the traffic collision, which happened on the Pont de l'Alma Bridge in Paris. Do you think Diana would still be here if it weren't for Camilla's relationship with Charles? Meghan doesn't have to deal with a mystery woman in the background, like poor Diana did. Camilla was always the fixture in Charles' life. Charles met Camilla back in 1971. He was really into her. When Charles was 24, he was in love with Camilla but had a rival for her affection Andrew Parker Bowles. Camilla's dad and Andrew's brother wanted Camilla and Andrew to marry, so they hatched a crazy plot, which culminated in them publishing a fake engagement notice for Camilla and Andrew in the Times. When Andrew saw the notice, he felt forced into proposing. He did propose. Charles, who had been concerned he wasn't mature enough to marry, had been dragging his feet and he never did pop the question to Camilla back then, when he should have once Andrew proposed, Camilla accepted. This strange series of unfortunate events led Charles to lose Camilla to another man. At least, for a while. Diana wanted to call off the wedding to Charles after she discovered the bracelet that Charles had bought for Camilla. Diana got cold feet. However, too much preparation for the wedding had already been done. The mugs with pictures of Diana and Charles on them were already manufactured. The whole world was awaiting the royal wedding. It was just too late to back out. 
since Megan doesn't have to put up with this hurtful stuff, she'll be able to focus on royal beauties, rather than heartbreak. And the feeling of having been betrayed in a way that was deceitful, unnecessary and truly horrible. Harry's dating life has been out there in the press, so it's quite unlikely he has a Camilla type in the background. Megan is older and more mature. Megan is 36. She's got the maturity that comes with getting older. Diana had just turned 20 when she went Prince Charles. Megan is way older than Diana was, so Megan won't need to grow up trapped in the royal fishbowl like Diana did. Megan's first TV appearance, on the daytime soap, General Hospital her dad was a lighting director on the show happened way back in 2002. This means that Megan was 19 when she appeared on the soap. Diana was 19 when she got engaged. Trying to build a Hollywood career is tough, and, as the Harvey Weinstein scandal, number sign May 2 protest and Golden Globes protest showed, Hollywood is not an easy place for women. Megan likely learned the thing or two while she was clawing her way up toward the starring role in Suits. As women age, they generally get more comfortable with themselves. They know who they are and what they want. I feel Megan is comfortable with herself and knows exactly how she wants to live. She's chosen this royal engagement, so she's going to make it work, just like she made her acting career work. Diana was probably a lot more naive, due to her sheltered background. Megan had a career. Diana was a kindergarten teacher before her wedding and she was probably great at it, as she was so maternal and nurturing. While Diana chose a job that was perfect for her talents and abilities, her career was basically something to do before marrying well. She attended the Swiss Finishing School Institute up in Vigamont. Sounds ritzy, doesn't it? And these costly finishing schools tend to be regarded as places where well-born young ladies learn how to land very eligible bachelors and then run big households after their weddings. Diana only lasted one term at the finishing school she was never much of a student but still. Megan worked for many years, as an actress and as a very skilled calligrapher of elegant wedding invitations. She did the wedding invitations for Blur Blind singer, Robin Thicke, and his now ex-wife, Paula Patton Paula was in mission. Impossible for ghost protocol. Clearly, Megan is disciplined and hardworking and these traits will help her to handle her royal beauties without breaking a sweat. Megan's career accomplishments are impressive. Diana's pre-engagement were pretty basic. Megan is used to getting what she wants from her career and I think she'll treat her royal beauty as a job. She'll take care of business like a true number sign girl boss. Megan has fewer family issues. Did you know that there was a lot of Dynasty 2017 style drama in Diana's family? Diana loved her stepmother, Rain Spencer, who was the daughter of famous romance novelist, Barbara Cartland. Diana called her stepmom, Acid Rain and, according to a Daily Mail report, once pushed Rain down the stairs at the Spencer family estate, Balthorpe House. The kids Diana and her siblings, including her brother, the ninth Earl Spencer, Charles absolutely hated Rain. There's no doubt about that. It didn't seem to matter that Diana's mom, Frances Schenkeed, had left Diana's dad for a wallpaper heir who already had a wife. Rain was the enemy. Eventually, Diana became estranged from her own mom, too. This is reportedly because Frances criticized Diana for dating unsuitable men after her marriage to Charles ended. Meghan's parents are divorced, but she close to both of them. She's got a good safety net in terms of her mom and dad and they will probably both give her support in a way that Diana perhaps didn't get. Megan's mom is a clinical therapist, which could come in handy when the royal mom ramps up. Her dad worked as a lighting director on Married with Children and General Hospital. He was very good at what he did for a living. He's an Emmy winner. Megan doesn't have an eating disorder. Diana struggled with bulimia and having an eating disorder makes life so much harder. Megan is a foodie who follows a healthy diet and cooks a lot. She loves her Vitamix blender and uses exercise to keep her figure red carpet ready. Since Megan doesn't appear to have issues with food, beyond just loving it, she's probably healthier and this will make it easier for her to do her royal duties. Bulimia is very hard on a person's body. It causes a lot of psychological wear and tear, too. As this eating disorder progresses, it may cause bloating, fainting, dehydration, seizures and host of other unpleasant and dangerous symptoms. After her marriage fell apart, 
Friends of Diana's told reporters at a British newspaper that the People's Princess was fading away physically, due to the ravages of her eating disorder. Apparently, Diana's bulimia became worse after she and Charles ended things. That's sad, isn't it? Meghan will hopefully avoid this pitfall. She may feel some pressure to be really skinny on her wedding day, because Kate Middleton is so slim when she's not pregnant, which she is right now and was read thin when she got married. Hopefully, Meghan won't go there. She's so beautiful just the way she is. Meghan isn't as moody. Diana was a cancer and they are known for their mood swings. Diana's moods would show on her face. Her expressions were so easy to read. Cancer is a sensitive sign. Diana would appear happy one day and seem to be sad and exhausted the next. This is because cancers are emotional and react to everything that goes on around them. They tune into other people's feelings. Cancers usually prefer to be at home. They love children and pets and cooking and housework. These are domestic creatures. Diana was forced out of the home to do her royal duties. Perhaps she would have been happier with a non-royal hubby, a lot of kids and couple of pets. A quiet and simple life wasn't her fate. Meghan is a Leo and they have sunny dispositions. Leo is a very strong sign which thrives on attention, rather than being thrown off balance by it. It makes sense that Meghan went into acting because that's where the limelight is. She wouldn't act for a living if she didn't like people looking at her. Other famous Leos who survive and thrive in the spotlight, despite plenty of UPS and downs, include Madonna, Kylie Jenner and Emilia Lovato. Queen Elizabeth's mother was a Leo, to the Queen Mother, Elizabeth Angela Marguerite both Lyon. Meghan earned her own money. Diana came for money. Meghan's family was comfortable, but not rich. Meghan racked up millions with her acting work and various side deals. Rumor has it she got 50 grand for every episode of Suits and she was a cast member for all seven seasons. She won't be back on Suits next season and some people are saying there may not even be a season 8. She was written out because the producers were pretty sure she'd get engaged to Harry. Also, Patrick J. Adams is done with the show. If the show ends, I hope that my funny character, Louis Litt played by Rick Hoffman gets a spin-off. No matter what happens with Suits, Meghan has plenty of cash of her own, which she earned by getting up very early in the morning to make it to the set on time. Before she became engaged, Diana's mother bought her a London flat at 60 Colhern Court between Chelsea and Kensington. That's a very good address for a teenage girl. I think people who earn their own money act differently than those who inherit it, but I'm not an heiress, so I could be wrong. I think, when you have to work hard for it, you possibly have more respect for it. This is why I think Meghan is going to value the high level of luxury that she's being introduced to now, through her lunches with the Queen, Christmases at Buckingham Palace and so on. I think Diana was used to the aristocratic life. Her family knew the royal family before she embarked on her doomed romance with Charles. So, maybe it didn't seem as magical as it will to Meghan Markle. Meghan gave Queen Elizabeth a toy hamster that sings as a Christmas gift. Giving such a light-hearted, joke white present seems to show that Meghan's feeling pretty comfortable in her new role. Meghan isn't English. Diana was very English. She was a lady, which meant that she was a part of the British aristocracy. Meghan is American, from California, and the royal family wasn't such a big factor in her upbringing. I think growing up outside of the nobility gives Meghan a different perspective. She will bring a fresh American spirit bold, confident to her royal beauties, rather than being trapped by all of the old-fashioned royal rules. Meghan will surely follow some of these rules, but will probably make some rules of her own. Speaking of rules, did you know that members of the royal family aren't supposed to post selfies? Allegedly, the Queen doesn't approve of them. This may be one of the reasons why Meghan Markle stopped posting on Instagram when her romance with Harry was heating up. The other reason would be that she was getting some hate on there. Some of it was racist and really disgusting. The press could be brutal, too, and that's why Harry intervened in November of 2016, by releasing a letter through Kensington Palace. He asked the press to stop the harassment. The couple got through all of that together. Harry was protective of his American beauty. I think the fact that Meghan isn't British is probably something that Harry likes, which may also help Meghan to modernize the royal family's image. Harry is more sensitive than Charles. 
Harry isn't in direct line for the throne, like Charles and William are. Harry wasn't raised to be King of England. He seems more sensitive than Charles, who expected Diana to put up with the Camilla thing, probably because he has a strong sense of entitlement. Harry will likely be nicer to Meghan than Charles was to Diana. It's quite possible that Charles never loved Diana, whereas it's obvious that Harry loves Meghan. He always tries to protect Meghan. When you love someone, you'll always try to protect them. Love and a sense of protectiveness go hand in hand. Harry's romance with ex Chelsea Baby reportedly tanked because she decided that she just couldn't handle the demands of the royal lifestyle. Chelsea is a lawyer and wanted more freedom and privacy. It's said that Chelsea broke his heart, although his habit of partying with other girls when Chelsea wasn't close by may mean that he was setting the stage for permanent separation from her. Meghan isn't so innocent. Diana was quite innocent before she married Charles. This is part of the reason why the Queen and others felt that she was a suitable match. While innocence is sweet, it often leads to loss of innocence. When loss of innocence happens, the person usually changes a lot. Meghan's 36 and she was married before. She's lived more of life than Diana had before her wedding and has more experience to draw on. For example, Meghan was married. In the past, you couldn't marry a royal if you were divorced, as Meghan is. If you've watched season 2 of The Crown Spoiler Alert you already know that Princess Margaret wasn't permitted to marry her love, Captain Peter Townsend, because he was divorced. Princess Margaret was offered the choice of losing her title and marrying Peter or not marrying Peter and remaining a princess. She chose the title. Meghan used to be married to film producer, Trevor Jelson. He actually looks a bit like Harry to me. Meghan has a type. Since Meghan's been married and divorced, she already understands that the fairy tale can go wrong. I think she'll do all that she can to be a great duchess and keep this new fairy tale alive. Meghan is an actress. When you're out there in public all of the time, you may not always feel like being cheery and polite. However, as a royal, it's important to always try to make a good impression. The monarchy stays alive because the public wants the fairy tale and the tradition and the pomp and circumstance. Royals must attempt to give the public what they want. Diana was not an actress, although she was pretty dramatic in her own way, and she had a lot of trouble hiding her negative emotions. Her openness with her emotions was why she was nicknamed, the People's Princess. If Diana was innocent or feeling sad, it would always show. If she was radiant and happy, it would show. People felt that she was for real. They could relate to her UPS and downs. While Meghan is slicker, due to her years of being on TV, she will probably try to show the world that she compassionate, too, just like Diana was. Meghan actually does seem compassionate. Her World Vision charity work in Africa began before she met Harry and says a lot about her. All of it very good. I don't think Meghan will act sad in public, like Diana so often did. I think she'll be a proud leo and accentuate the positive at all times. Meghan will be able to use her acting skills to give the public what they want. She's used to playing a part and playing it well. If she needs to go into full actress mode to make it through an event, when she's just not feeling jovial on the inside, she can draw on her years of acting experience. Meghan didn't grow up rich. When you grow up rich, you're probably not going to appreciate the perks of being royal the way that someone from a middle-class background like Meghan's would. Meghan's dad was a successful lighting tech in the entertainment industry, but they weren't wealthy. Diana grew up on a huge estate, Thorpe House. It's such an impressive estate that the public is allowed to tour parts of it. Meghan is probably going to be more grateful for the perks of being royal than Diana was. And what perks there are. Imaging living in Meghan and Harry's love nest Nottingham Cottage, and going to see the Queen regularly. Imagine hanging out with Prince William and the Duchess of Cambridge whenever you want to. Imagine in rubbing shoulders with the most famous people in the world and drawing huge crowds of boring royal watchers everywhere that you go. Imagine the money and the lifestyle. It's pretty epic. Imagine the servants who are there to cater to your every need. Sounds good, doesn't it? I believe Meghan will appreciate all of this more. Mostly because she didn't grow up rich and also because Harry will be a real partner, which is what Diana never had. Meghan doesn't seem depressed. Diana suffered from postpartum depression which surely made her royal duties harder to complete. 
This was on top of having an eating disorder and an unfaithful husband. Megan doesn't appear to be suffering from any kind of depression, so she likely to be more mentally balanced when she becomes a duchess. Megan surely has her bad days, like everyone else. She complained about the early call times for suits and how getting up so early for work made it tough to keep her relationship with Harry going. It would have been a lot to juggle. Early wake-up times don't thrill most people and, clearly, Megan is one of them so am I. I hope she gets to sleep in now. Suits was great and I appreciate the hard work of all of the show's stars, including Megan. It was a fun show which may or may not continue. While Megan has her off days, she seems like a happy person in general. I believe she tougher, mentally, than Diana. Diana was emotional and sensitive. That was her beauty and her weakness. What made us love Diana also caused Diana a lot of pain. She couldn't teach herself not to feel. Harry is more stable than Charles. Diana said that Charles would be all over her sometimes while he was courting her, and then stopped contacting her for three weeks. Later, she realized that he must have been seeing Camilla during these three-week breaks. Nothing changed after the wedding. Harry now knows what his mother went through due to infidelity the whole world knows and he's very unlikely to do the same to his wife, so Megan probably won't have to deal with cheating while she performs her royal duties. William seems like a good husband and Harry probably will be a nice hubby, too. Harry was a bit of a wild child. There's no doubt about it. Is all of that behind him? We'll find out soon enough. That present, Harry seems stable. He created the Invitos games to honor sick, wounded and injured armed services personnel, as well as associated veterans. During the games, veterans who fit the Invitos games criteria play sports, such as indoor rowing and wheelchair basketball. Harry has grown up and his maturity will help Meghan to be a great duchess.